Hey folks, this is the main prepper. I wanted to do a shout out this morning to Miss Battleborn uh, for her superlative work on the Sega 12 gauge in identifying and showing a very good and inexpensive fix for the gas regulator tube issue that it was having. Not so much the tube itself, but the amount of gas being fed in needs to be adjusted because you think about it, you're shooting different types of shotgun ammunition, you're capturing different amounts of gas to being pushed back to operate the regulator. Now, uh, to operate the bolt. And she goes into all of this in great detail. Her methodology and her research on it were very thorough. She goes step by step by step on what she did. I'm going to bypass all of that and not try to expand upon genius. I'm just going to leave that alone and ask you to go have a look at her channel and go watch. She's also a pretty good shooter. A uh, 780 yard shot with a scar, which is not uh, necessarily a long distance shooting weapon, is very impressive. Uh, and I say that I'm a former uh, scout sniper, United States Marine Corps school trained. So uh, when I give that compliment, it's not a hollow and empty one. It truly was a very uh, admirable shot. Okay. So go check out her video and you'll see exactly why she came up with the conclusion uh, to fix the regulator tube adjuster and also with uh, putting a new piston in there, which is exactly what I've done as well. Uh, and so I feel very reinforced uh, with her expertise standing behind essentially the same conclusions. Uh, we'll also be doing further videos here uh, on this channel about the Sega in conclusion to it or in addition to that talk about uh, my upgrades, my modifications, and a few things that I did. Uh, I like flat dark earth, what can I say? All right, folks, this has been the main prepper. Uh, thank you again, Miss Battleborn, for your excellent work. Come back uh, after you look at her video on this, and you'll see I'm saying the same thing. I think I have a little bit better camera, so I'm showing some close-ups of the parts that she put on uh, and that I put on, and I think that uh, it'll all work together. Uh, teamwork, yay. Okay, bye. Hey folks, this is the main prepper and today I'm going to be doing a slight upgrade to the gas piston and regulator on my Sega 12 gauge shotgun. I'm filming today from an undisclosed location at a friend's house and we are in his kitchen and I am, uh, <laughs> the weapon is clean so I'm not going to make a mess of his uh, wife's nice tablecloth. Uh, and thank you uh, very much Diane for letting us borrow the kitchen table. Alright, what I'll be replacing today is I'm going to replace the gas tube regulator with the DPH improved gas plug regulator here and it is a six position regulator and you can see hopefully clearly there are five slots of different size cut in here plus a blank uh, the blank being right here also I'm going to replace the gas piston which goes inside of the piston well and I'll show you that uh, in just a second and this is the Tapco. This is about nine dollars. It's a little bit heavier than the one that's in the weapon right now and the sides are a little bit smoother especially these edges and I think that's going to be a key because you need enough of an edge uh, that you won't have gas escaping by but the crispness on the edge can sometimes work against you because it could snag and get dirty. All right, this is the Sega 12 gauge semi-automatic shotgun. It has a very similar action to the Kalashnikov. Before we pick up any weapon, we need to assume that the weapon is loaded. Now, the Kalashnikov weapon, uh, the one that the military gets, has three uh, positions. But in this case, we have safe and fire, and we don't have an automatic. So safe would be here where the S is and fire would be down here. To unload, you're going to need to put the weapon on fire. Never grab a weapon by the trigger itself. You can touch the outside of the trigger guard, of course, but never ever pick up a weapon by the trigger guard. I try to keep my booger hookers away from that trigger except when I actually have the weapon in my shoulder and I'm ready to shoot. So the first thing we want to do before we unload a weapon is we want to take the magazine out. If you're not familiar with the AK, there is a thumb type release on the magazine. It's designed as an intuitive so that your hand can come up and grab. Let me show you that again. Your hand can come out and your thumb will automatically, if you're grabbing at the top, push this in. And that will release the magazine and you can rotate it out. Obviously, to put a new one in, there's a hook on the front of this magazine, which you see here pointing with my finger, and that would go inside. All right. So the first thing you want to do is always take the magazine out, set the magazine aside. In this case, the magazine was empty, but that doesn't mean the weapon itself is. 
Next, if the weapon was on safe, you cannot pull the Kalashnikov bolt to the rear by the charging handle. You cannot pull it all the way back because it will lock against this safe mechanism. Okay? So what you'll have to do is switch this to fire or to the F position. And this one's a little bit tight because it's a brand new weapon. Ah. Okay, so that is off safe and on fire. Now, whenever you grab the AK charging mechanism, you want to make sure you remember this one little key phrase from the main prepper. When using the AK, point your thumb away, or simply AK, thumb away. Put your thumb away from the AK. That's a good rule of thumb anytime you have a charging handle because, ha, no pun intended, you don't want your thumb here where it's going to snag against these parts of the weapon here, such as the safe and fire mechanism lever. So AK, thumb away, pull to the rear. We're going to do a four point check. What I'm doing is I'm looking inside of here at the bolt face in the back. I am looking where my thumb is, or my finger is. I am looking inside the magazine well. I see no magazine in there. I am looking inside the chamber and I'm watching to see if a round ejected. Since none of those four conditions are true, that is they're all false, it's all clear, it's all empty, I have a clear weapon. I can now ride the charging handle forward. I don't want to just let go back here because that's a little bit of extra damage and shock on the weapon you don't need to put on there. All right, so I can ride that forward, it locks down, that's good. Now this weapon is safe and it is ready to work on. First thing we need to do is we need to remove the old parts. This is held in with a, this gas tube regulator is held in with a detent pin, which I'm trying to get enough light on there. If you can see right at the tip of my finger, that little silver dot. What we're going to have to do is wedge the weapon uh, against my leg and I've taken the stock off because we're going to be working on that in a second and I want to deploy My tool now I have different different types of uh, Multiplier tools. I'm going to try the can opener uh, on there because it gets very little use You can use anything that will be able to hold pressure against it. I push the detent in and I can unscrew the gas regulator. Once you get past a point, you can let go with the detent pin and remove the old gas regulator. Now I'm going to show you this in a comparison side by side so that you'll see the difference. This gas regulator has a single slant to it, so the adjustments on it are somewhat limited as compared to this regulator, which is the replacement one. Also, you'll notice from the side, this one's got no teeth or anything to grab. It's just a very simple, uh, easily constructed piece of machinery. You could also put a large coin in here if you needed to to get a little traction. Same thing with this one. So this one, the replacement, is obviously a much more robust piece of gear. And this was about $30, I believe, for this one. So it's a little pricey, but I think it's going to make a big difference. The reason this is important, I'm going to show you in a second, you want to be able to have a lot of finite control with the amount of gas getting blown back because the way this weapon operates is it's a gas-operated weapon, which means as the round is fired, gas is trapped in here from the explosive force of the gunpowder and is passed up through, see where my little finger is, I'll remove that out of there. Can you see that little black dot? That little black dot in there is the place where the gas shoots up and in and then it pushes back against this piston here, which looks just like this piston here. This piston sits against the front of the bolt rod, the bolt operating rod. So, as the weapon is fired, the explosion drives the bolt all the way to the rear, essentially stripping back, pulling the round out that's in the chamber, throwing it to the side, and stripping a new round off of the top of the magazine and feeding it directly into the chamber, where when you squeeze the trigger, it will fire again. That's the beauty of uh, the AK. It's a very simple and rugged weapon, and it's gas-operated. So. Your gas operated system has very few moving parts, but it does have a couple. That means the piston 
and the regulator are the two most important parts of this, other than actually not having complete system failure of the slide rod or something else breaking. So in addition to having a good spring in there, which this does, it's very tight, you want to make sure that this piston does not snag up and that it is also durable enough. Now this is a durable piston, but it's not quite as well made, I think, as the Tapco one. This one has some pretty sharp edges around the top, as I mentioned, and my concern is, is that, especially during the break-in, it may snag up a little bit and cause this to have some issues. This, I believe, will work better, but it may be that this was actually an unnecessary expense. It's $9, but I thought since I'm already in here and taking this apart, I would replace both parts. So now let's show you how we put this in, the new regulator piston. Very simple one, and very simple two. This just screws in. And now listen carefully. Can you hear that clicking? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this all the way down. And there are six positions. When I go to fire this, the reason you need these different positions is because you're going to be shooting different ammunition. I have target ammunition, I have some game loads, I also have combat loads, I have high brass, low brass, everything in between. So what I'm going to do is I shoot these, is I'm going to see which position I need to be in. And I may actually take some nail polish and make a marking on here. But what I'll probably say is, okay, uh, one click back is for this kind of round, two clicks back is for that, three clicks is this. That's the easiest way to remember it. Now I'm going to do this in a series of videos about the Sega shotgun. Uh, this was just one to show you how to replace the gas plug regulator and the gas plug or gas piston. Alright folks, this has been the main prepper. This is my Sega 12 gauge. This is my upgrade. It's a little bit less than 50 bucks for an upgrade to the actual piston. I haven't had a chance to fire this yet. I understand it's got a break-in period. I will get a chance to get to the range as soon as I get off of my profile. Until then, it stays over at my good friend's house, and, uh, and I've asked him if he would shoot it for me, but he's just not had time. So uh, maybe I'll leave him a few cases of ammo and he'll go break it in for me. Thank you, folks. This has been the main prepper, and when you come back, we're going to look at changing the hardware out uh, and the furniture on this.